Hey guys, welcome back. An official trouble is now available for Lai Cola Max 2. So now we can flash any JSI image available be it AOS, PRR, Pixel Experience or whatever of your choice. And also we can flash latest Android P boots available for trouble phones. I have flashed Android P DP4 on my phone and now let's see how to enable trouble and get Android P working. First make sure you download all these files shown here before trying anything. First one is the recovery which we are going to use to enable trouble and flash ROMs. Second partition creator. Third is the ROM which enables trouble. Next files for flashing Android P system image, post GSI files and few fixes and the rest are ADB and fastboot files. If there are any extra fixes they will be included in the description so download everything and anything mentioned there. So once you have downloaded all the required resources, go to the settings, about phone on whatever ROM you are using, enable developer options by tapping multiple times on the build number, then go to developer options, enable OEM unlocking if you have a lock bootloader and USB or ADB debugging. After that, connect phone to your PC, go to ADB and fastboot folder, hold shift plus right click and select open command window or windows PowerShell here and tap ADB devices, authorize your PC and reboot your phone to the bootloader. If you have a lock bootloader type fastboot OEM unlock within windows PowerShell, I already have a unlock bootloader so there is no need for that. Now it's time to flash the recovery. Copy the name of the recovery if there are any special characters in the name, remove them and now within PowerShell type fastboot flash recovery name of the recovery dot img and press enter. Now we need to boot to the recovery you can do that by holding volume up plus power button or you can simply type fastboot boot name of the recovery dot img. If you already have TWRP installed, you can simply install the new TWRP by going to the recovery, install tab on the home screen, select image and pick the new recovery and flash it to the recovery partition and reboot back to the recovery again for finishing the installation. Once you get to the TWRP home screen, transfer all the required files from your PC to the phone which include partition creator zip, AX ROM, P system image which is the .img file which you can get by unpacking pdp4 gsi zip, 3 post gsi files, in call to zip and 2 fixes. So first let's flash the partition creator zip. Installation is same as flashing a ROM by going to the install tab. If you get any error like cannot mount just ignore it. And now back to the home screen, wipe tab, uncheck all partitions except vendor and swipe to confirm wipe. We have got the Vendar partition and now we need to enable it by going to the mount tab and select Vendar. Now go to wipe tab again, select all partitions, system, cache, Dalvik cache, data except Vendar and internal storage and swipe to confirm wipe. Next go to the install tab, select AEX trouble ROM and flash it like normal zip file. Reboot your phone once the flashing is done, finish all initial setup and now we have successfully enabled trouble on Max 2. And finally, it's time for flashing the Android P GSI onto our phone. Back to the recovery, wipe tab, select all partitions except vendor and internal storage, swipe to confirm wipe. Now back to home screen, install tab, select image and pick the pkdp4 system image we just transferred and flash it to the system partition. Once the flashing is done, go back to the home screen, mount tab, select vendor. Now go back now, install tab and pick all three post GSI zips one by one and flash them. Back to the home screen again, mount tab, select system and vendor partitions and flash in call to zip and two zip files containing fixes for sensors and other bugs via install tab. And that's it, we have successfully installed Android P on our Lamax 2 and let's now reboot. The phone restarts twice before it reaches the Google Splash screen, so be patient. USB debugging is working by default so there won't be any issues executing ADB commands and for MTB mode to work, go to developer options and search for default USB configuration and select file transfer. Just like Android P GSI for all the phones, there will be a system lag which can be fixed by updating Google Play services app and for persistent notifications, after updating GMS core app, force stop each one of these notifications and for pixel setup, force stop once and when the notification come back again, connect to Wi-Fi and now you will be able to finish the setup. 
After doing all these reboot your phone and now the ROM feels very smooth. If you are still having some stutters while navigating through settings or while opening apps, there's a lag fix TWRP flashable zip file included in the description. The hardware keys work but they are not backlit. There's an on-screen navigation bar enabled by default, maybe it is included in one of the fixes. To enable P gestures, go to settings, system, gesture and enable swipe up on home button. Swipe fingerprint for notification option is there but it is not working. And about P gestures, you can swipe once on the home button to open recent menu, long swipe for accessing app drawer, you can swipe up on a recent tab to close it, swipe down to open it and when you scroll all the recent tabs to the right, you can find the clear all button. The home button can also be used as a slider. As you can see with DP4, the slider extends all the way from right edge to left edge and you can open the recent tab by single swipe to the right. About other features of DP4, you can enable dark theme within display, device theme and the theming applies to quick toggles, volume slider and app drawer. And when you hit the clock icon in the quick settings, it opens the clock app and now we have a volume slider for call volume under sound settings. Now let's see what's working and what's not with this ROM. Network is fine, 2G, HSPA, HSPA plus, LTE works fine but there is no Vivo LTE support. No issues with calls via 2G or 3G, mic and speakers both are working. And about Wi-Fi, both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz bands are working. No issues with hotspot, Bluetooth. Audio playback is fine via speakers and Bluetooth, no issues with video playback and also my CDLA earphones are working so USB OTG support is also there. All sensors are working fine as you can see with the sensor test app, accelerometer, light, proximity all are fine. GPS is also working but it took me about 10 seconds to get a location lock. There is no camera app included in this ROM. I've tried one Google HDR camera although portrait pictures are fine, when I take normal pictures the app just crashed. There might be other working Google camera ports but open camera from Google Play Store is working fine for both pictures and video recording. Now let's test adaptive brightness and it is working. Nightlight feature is also there and about charging the rapid charging works. When you go to the security and location, you can find pixel imprint which is FP unlock and fingerprint unlock works great, it is as fast as Oreo ROMs. Under system, advanced, you can find Lyco extras where you can find couple of options for autofocus fix, quick charge and display color calibration. Android P DP4 port for Lamax 2 looks like a stable ROM for me if you don't mind no Vivo LTE feature. So that's it about Android P on Lamax 2. Hit the like button if you find this video helpful and also make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching guys and I will see you soon in my next video.